This is yet another question where you've got to have an instinct to avoid algebra. This, this question has three variables, P, X, and V. How often in math class in school do you have three variables? Probably not very often. So something's already weird about this, right? So you have to sense that and be like, okay, they're messing with me. Can I get back to a place where I'm more comfortable? Plus, when we scan these answer choices, notice we keep seeing something in these questions. If we, get, if we made x equal to zero, the only thing we'd be left with is these last terms, and they're all different. So x equals zero is going to get us the right answer here. Other numbers might not work out as nicely, but I'm always going to try zero if I can because it's so easy. So what that means, though, is that we're making a random number, random, x equals zero, for uh, the x. But with the P and the V, since those are dependent on our value of X, we're not going to make random numbers for P and V. We're going to solve those out, right? So P is going to be 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 4. So let's just get rid of the 0, and P is 4, and V is 5, right? So it takes two seconds to do that. Now, what did they want? Let's be really careful. We wanted P times V minus 2P plus V. So if you can't do this in your head, that's okay. Split it apart, right? So P is 4, and V is 5. So 4 times 5 is is 20 minus 2 times 4 is 8 plus 5 so that's 12 plus 5 is 17 is that an answer yes that's it this would be a question that would take me I don't know 20 seconds maybe on the real SAT and this is a hard question there's a lot of moving parts here and there are definitely things that would be very annoying to deal with if you had to plug in the value of P because that's what they want the college board explanation here is going to say take this entire equation for P substitute that in here take this entire equation for V substitute that in there so you've got a foil you've got to combine like terms you've got to distribute a negative this is a nightmare this is going to be a huge opportunity for careless mistakes don't let them do that if you put in zero what's the worst that could happen that you add wrong that you multiply wrong honestly it becomes so much easier that to, to avoid careless mistakes or if you do make them they're just arithmetic mistakes hopefully your brain would just be like oh wait a minute I lost a negative oh wait a minute I multiplied wrong so that's the goal is that not only are careless mistakes less likely when we have numbers but if we do make them we are more likely to notice them because our brain thinks in terms of numbers it doesn't think in terms of algebra that's why you learn algebra when you're like 13 14 but you learn how to count on your fingers when you're like four years old okay you you learn numbers sooner because our brain can handle them algebra much harder much more complex so stay away from it whenever possible